Hey guys, Chris from Propel here, and we're here at the new Bosch e-bike systems North America headquarters in, that was a mouthful, in Foothill Ranch, <laughs> California, and we're here with Jocelyn Vandeveld, I think I said it right? Yeah. And she actually just recently joined the team at Bosch as the new head of marketing, and, and I've actually met Jocelyn previously because you worked at Trek. Yeah. But I know you worked at a bunch of other places. So why don't you tell like a little bit how you got here? Because sure. this is a pretty exciting position. It's super exciting. Yeah. Um, so I um big fan of bicycles from a really young age. Yeah. And always worked in active lifestyle industry. I started my career with Red Bull and mm. worked there for almost six years and um, grew up in Illinois and when my husband and I decided to move to Wisconsin, at that point, I was like, you know what? I want to try my hand in the bike industry. I thought you were going to say you want to be a cheesehead. Well, no. <laughs> naturally, that comes with, it's part of the territory. But no, I, I started pursuing working in the bike industry when we moved to Madison, Wisconsin, which is kind of a bike mecca, Yeah. so as a lot of people know. And I started my career in the bike industry with Sarah Cycling Group, which ironically enough is now a partner of Bosch's, so that is going to work really well for me. And then awesome. I did a little bit in the fitness industry and then got my chance to go work for Trek, which was very much a big goal for me. I grew up riding Trek, so I worked for mm -hmm. them in the marketing team, mostly on city product, so adventure bikes, hybrid bikes, and electric bikes. So I got to know the team at Bosch really well, and lo and behold, here I am, moved the whole family from Wisconsin to California, and um, I'm super excited, really happy to be here. We're here to talk about the 2020 stuff, or maybe new generation three and generation four motors and other things, which, which we talked about that a little bit before because it's often referred to as like, what's new for 2020, but it's not necessarily model year 2020, it's more just this is, a 2020 new, happened to be the time exactly. that's Exactly, yeah, that's like, like one of the things to think about with um, e-bike systems is um, it's a component to a bicycle, right? It's right. not like this, sure, it's our product, but um, every year, um, cars come out with, with new, new models, right? Sure. But that's not what Bosch is going to do. We're not going to have a new system coming out every single year. Yeah. And so the reality is, even though we're going to have this great new system rolling out here um, in the next few months, um, the Gen 4 systems that <clears throat> will really extend our line to all different types of rides and expand the possibilities for our bike partners, but also it's just gonna give a great variety of options to, um, to really like run the, the um, range of prices as well, yeah. all the way to um, all different types of ride capabilities. But at the end of the day, it's still helping support creating an e-bike, right? So it That's still it. is gonna serve what the rider is looking for. So last year we saw some new introductions with Generation 3. Bosch launched in the U.S. with Generation 2, which is mostly what we see in the U.S. now with the Performance Line, Performance Line CX, and Performance Speed. Mm -hmm. But last year we introduced the Active Line, Active Line Plus, which are these motors here, right? These, so mm -hmm. some of the changes, right, they went to that larger chain ring, Motors are a little bit smaller in size. Um, and my understanding, my inclination is people would ask me like, okay, well they did this. Is there gonna, are they gonna do this with the other motors like the CX and the speed motor? And I would think yes. I know some of the things about Bosch is that generally pretty conservative and try to make sure everything that they put on the market, it's reliable and it works consistently. Right. And that's been my experience. I mean, we've sold, thousands of bikes with the generation two system on it and we've only had a handful of issues with the motors you know and and to and generally it's like such small things and yeah. under like the most extreme circumstances so I figured okay if I had to speculate they're <laughs> gonna take this this is gonna be their test case of going with this smaller motor without the reduction gear and like the larger chain ring and as they see that that works really well launch it to the rest of the lineup and that seemed to be the case of what went on. We celebrated our 10 year anniversary right, this year. Right. Okay. And North America is getting ready to celebrate five years. Yeah. We're just getting started. We're going to continue to, um, like, we're going to continue to build on our success. And we've had a lot of that. So, taking from the success of what we already have created and done and just building on that. 
So we continue to get great product, but we're going to continue to build on it and offer a wider line, bigger variety, right. and new innovations. Yeah. So why don't you tell us about some of those new innovations? Sure. Like um, one thing I like to call out is, especially coming from Madison, where the cargo bike is now quickly becoming king. Yeah. I'm sure you saw that in Brooklyn as well. Absolutely. Like, like the cargo bike is king and queen, whatever we want to call it. It's just so awesome to see families rolling up to school, just like you would in the Netherlands or something, unloading the family or going to soccer practice or whatever it might be. Um, and so in this new Gen 4 lineup, we've developed um, two cargo-specific performance um, drive units. And those are going to be able to work better to help deal when they're under load. So if you put hundreds of pounds on that bike, it's going to be able to support that. And one of the hardest things for anyone who's ever been on a cargo bike is getting that heavy load going. Right. So it's giving you more power in the beginning especially, and will level out when you get up to speed. Because right. then it won't need as much power well, anymore, the well, inertia. Especially, of, uh, yeah, you have that momentum with the heavy load that, that works quite well, right? Yeah, definitely. So that'll come in you know, your 20 mile an hour, and then there's also a speed version of, of that um, drive unit. Um, another innovation is just overall seeing uh, a reduction in size across the line. You're going to see some smaller drive units, which the cool thing there is, sure, it's great for um, a person riding a bike, but at the end of the day, it's an e-bike. Like, yeah. It's going to help you move no matter what, but right. who it really helps is actually the bicycle manufacturers. It gives them a lot more flexibility to be able to design around that drive unit and be a little more creative. The bikes that have the power tube in them, we have the ability to, um, the bike uh, manufacturers have the ability to install it either like the vertical way or right. turn it the flat way. So again, giving them some creativity and a way to design around whatever their style or, or uh, product purpose might be. So speaking about manufacturers, you know, a hot topic lately has been, at least in the shop and talking with customers and stuff like that is, well, okay, now we see generation four and some new additions to generation three. Now everything's gonna change, right? So like all the bikes next year, they're gonna have generation four, generation three, but that's not necessarily the case, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, bike manufacturers, like globally, um, Bosch is in something like 80 bike manufacturers, and there's no way they're all gonna be using gen four right, right out of the gate. Right. So um, they can pick and choose what they need for a, the price point they're looking for, B, the kind of ride experience that they want, um, C, their tried and true technology. So a lot of times it's really awesome for especially a shop like yourself like yeah. to be able to see, gosh, this is such a great system. Like yeah. I, This is reliable. I know we don't have issues with it. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm personally that kind of shopper. I'm not that leading edge technology right. person. I love to see the tried and true technology. I, li I like to personally, like when I buy cell phones, I get something that's been out one season. Yeah. That's just me. But um, I like knowing that something is the, the kinks have been ironed out if there were any to begin with. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. I mean, generally my experience is the stuff that does release from Bosch, it has been tested pretty significantly. Totally, and, yeah. that's, and that's really great. But, but the reality is like the current generation two system, it's solid, it works well. and. Yeah. My thought is, if the bike is produced and it meets your needs, like, don't sweat it, you know? Like, don't get too caught up in the specs, because I think a lot of times that happens for people where it's like, okay, well, this one has 75 newton meters of torque, this one has 63 newton meters, and I don't know, maybe I just wait until get the 75, or maybe I should wait, <laughs> and maybe one day they'll have 90 newton meters. Yeah, you're Who making knows? a great but, point, is yeah. there's always gonna be something new. Right. We're always gonna innovate, every other product you know, company is going to continue to innovate on the products they already have. So how long are you going to wait? Like, I'd rather be riding this fall. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'd be ra rather, you know, out like August, September and enjoying, yeah. enjoying my e-bike. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, th great point, especially if you're using a bike, like a lot of our customers using it to replace their car. I mean, the savings that you might have in that period of time where you're waiting, you could probably, you know, ride that bike for a while. And if you want to sell it when you find you want something new, like, do that. And even if you lose a little money, it's okay. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to think about it, but I think this is an important topic and it's something that I've been discussing with a lot of people lately. And, I, and I'm glad to talk with you about it and having a little bit of a different perspective. And, and especially, you know, coming from Trek, I'm sure you guys have thought about some of this stuff internally. So 
yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the motor system and, and basically some of the changes. I see this new performance line, which is pretty cool. So this is in addition to the generation three, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be kind of confusing too, right? It so can like be. generation one, which we actually never saw right. here in North America. Yeah. And now we're on, you know, generation three and four. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about like what those numbers mean and yeah, so the performance line is expanded um, to be able to address um, a variety of, of different riders, really. So um, the new performance line is really geared towards more of that trekking or um, getting out um, to more rolling hillside or some longer distances that you want to cover. Right. Um, and then we were able to separate performance um, speed out and then expand on the CX line. So it. it's giving more versatility to the um, bike manufacturers, but more variety really for the consumer too. So um, really whatever like your ride style that you're looking to achieve, there's going to be a system that's gonna work for you. But again, I think it really comes down to finding the overall package that best serves you. Right. And, and if that overall package happens to have a Gen 3, then great. Um, also, the Gen 4 um, is, of course, like a lot of products, over time going to get smaller. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a little more compact. It's lighter. Um, it so does this, have a little bit more torque. So this is the Gen 4, right? Gen 4 yes. CX motor. Yeah, performance CX. And yeah, so like I said, it like expanded. Tiny, huh? Yeah, the line expanded for performance just to be able to have a little more variety. So something that's more sporty and dynamic versus, like I was just describing, something that's more for trekking or um, more of those recreational outer commute style type rides that have might have some more distance to cover and more yeah. some hills. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the same form factor as the new cargo line as well as well as the new speed motor. Yep. Right. So. Yep. Look exactly the same. Just super compact, lightweight, more assistance. The some of the details that I've found to be different because I did get to spend some time with them in Germany recently. So one, less resistance when you ride without power, which um, in some situations can be a factor and definitely nice. Something that was taking, you know, like you were mentioning earlier, like adopted from that active line. Right, um, the generation three yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is yeah. great. I mean, and when it's not so much when you're, not too many people are riding without the power on, but it's great when you're riding through that max capacity of yeah. like what it can support you at. I know I really enjoy that personally. Yeah, that's really great, especially for like sporty riding particularly. Yeah. I think that that's a really big deal. And then the way the motor performs, we talked about the cargo line, 400% assistance uh, up from 275 from the previous CX, but then the CX goes to 340% assistance, mm -hmm. but there's more power like throughout the that power curve, if you will, right? Exactly. And yeah. then the speed, it's something particularly unique, right, where at 20 miles an hour, you actually get more power going up to 28, so it makes it easier to get up to that higher speed, which, mm -hmm. uh, again, 340% assistance, which i am kind of been, like, digging into a lot of the specs and super excited about it, but, again, like, you know, it's it's really about like how how it rides and exactly. what, what that experience I, is like for you. As somebody um, who's been marketing e-bikes now for you know three years, almost three years at Trek, and now coming to Bosch, like at the end of the day, it's all about the fun. Yeah, it's all about how it feels. Right. Like do that Pepsi challenge, yeah. you know? Like try a couple e-bikes at a great bike right. shop like your your own, and um, get the, get a couple demos in, and it'll yeah. like it'll the test will be clear to you. Like I really like the way this particular bike rides, and yeah. We get that awesome feedback all the time is just how great the Bosch systems drive. And I, I drive, listen to me, it's how they ride. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really fun to be on both sides of the coin, um, yeah. for sure. Great, so a couple things real quick. I mean, so new updates to the power tube. So you guys recently introduced this power tube 500, but now we have two additions to the power tube lineup with the 400, 400 watt yeah. hour. Um, for those wants something maybe a little bit less expensive. Yeah. Is it smaller in size as well? Nope. It's exactly same, the same. Same size as the mm -hmm. 500 watt hour, but the 625 is a little bit longer. So that's a 625 watt hour. Yep. Slightly longer, but we're off, we're seeing a lot of manufacturers in, in, implement that for next year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, it's about giving variety to right. to the consumer and also to the bike manufacturers yeah. to to really serve their customers' needs. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. 
So now we went over the motor system and the battery. There's some interesting additions to the display. I mean, you guys started with the Intuvia, then you added the Purion and the Kiox display pretty recently, which now has an update with the eBike Connect app, which yep. I've been experimenting with. This is pretty cool. But now you have this display that's got even more connectivity and that's really exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Like at a high level, it's, it's first of all, it's called Smartphone Hub. Yeah. And it's going to be able to connect with the Kobe.bike app. Um, Kobe is a, a company that we bought a couple years back. And it really just helps bring, you know, all of the, you know, IoT, Internet of Things yeah. to life on your bicycle. So being able to do navigation, talk to family or friends, play your music, um, do any of the like data recording that you need for your ride, connect Strava, connect your heart rate, I mean, you name it, it's all going to talk to the various other um, devices and, and other technology that you have in your life yeah. and bringing that right to your handlebar. That's really awesome. And I think people might be a little overwhelmed, like thinking about all these things functioning on your handlebars. But I think one of the great things is that you can control it all with the Bosch thumb pad. Correct. And from my side, I think that that's actually a great improvement over the alternative of like holding the phone in your hand or yeah. doing this sort oh, of thing. Oh, I can so, relate. Yeah. Uh, I, I could appreciate having that option to, you know, check a message real quick or whatever the case may be. So, totally. Yeah. yeah, it's like heads-up display then, you know, it's right in front of you. Right. The other cool thing is it's going to come on some of the bikes that our bike uh, partners are yeah. producing, but this is going to be something that will be able to be purchased as an aftermarket upgrade. Sweet. Yeah. So if someone's really into that, but they didn't, it didn't come with their bike, that is available to, to folks out there. So. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, it's really great hanging with you. I'm sure we're going to get to spend more time with you in the future as you're now the new marketing manager of Bosch e-bike systems North America if I can fit that all in one uh, sentence there uh, you know yeah it's uh, it's great and, and it's really cool the different variety of experience that you bring to the table I'm sure it's gonna be a great addition to this already awesome team at Bosch and and thanks again for taking your time with yeah us. sure it's been yeah. a pleasure yeah. Thanks. awesome thanks everyone well thanks guys mm -hmm.